Welcome to a brand new episode of DM Tips. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that I know a lot of DMs, myself included, struggle with, and that is being inspired. Now I'm not talking about the kind of inspiration you hand out to your players, I'm talking about that feeling of writer's block that we all inevitably come across sometimes when we're creating a setting or writing an adventure or making a dungeon even. The tips I'm going to be covering today are by no means a be-all, end-all solution to coming up with great, incredible ideas, but they are some things that I find helpful when I'm brainstorming, and hopefully you will too. Now when we're trying to come up with new ideas, the first thing you need to keep in mind is how important is what you're working on right now. I know that as a DM the initial urge is to just fully flush out every aspect of your campaign and get it all figured out even before you start just from the very first session. This is doubly true if it's a homebrew campaign because I know I definitely feel this way sometimes. I just want to make sure I have the answers for my players no matter what questions might come up or who knows where they might go. I need to make sure that area is prepared too, right? But realistically, as long as you've prepared for the next session and you've got just a vague idea of what's going to happen the session after that, you're way ahead of the game. That said though, there's absolutely nothing wrong with preparing for things in advance, and I know for a lot of us this is actually pretty fun, but just try not to get too distracted with the big picture before you figure out what's going on right in front of you. So that said, let's talk about some techniques we can use to get those creative juices flowing. One thing I find tremendously useful is actually just looking at concept art. When I'm stuck on something, I will almost always end up looking at concept art related to the thing I'm working on. Say for example I'm working on a vast desert area in my campaign, and I need areas and interesting things to put in that desert so it's not just empty. Of course we're going to have a couple of oases, maybe some desert outposts, but I want something more unique and interesting and I just can't figure it out. This is when I might turn to looking up some concept art. I'll often go to websites like DeviantArt or even just Google search is actually pretty good for this most of the time and just look up desert concept art fantasy. You can usually get pretty great results just from that alone, but another website I like to go to is literally called conceptartworld.com. They actually have a section at the top of their website called Inspiration, and if you click on this, it brings you to an area where you can find collections of incredible concept art from many different artists, all pertaining to one specific theme. So for our desert-themed adventure, we might look at the posts related to Dune. While Dune is not medieval fantasy, or not even really fantasy at all, it does have some fantasy elements to it, and besides, the purpose of this exercise isn't to just cut and paste things that we see, it's just to get us thinking and uh, ultimately come up with some new interesting ideas that we can then turn into parts for our campaign. I usually do this for some time and whenever I come across an image that I like, I'll save it into a folder on my computer just called Inspiring Images, and then when I'm done looking up things, I'll go over what I've saved for the day. The key to this exercise is to really just ask questions about the artwork you're seeing and what the implications of it are. Take this piece for example, I found this today on Google Image Search and I thought it looked interesting. This artwork clearly depicts a pretty barren desert, however there is a thriving city in the center of it and it's got some kind of protective shield around it. So that could be something, so then we have to ask, well who lives there then? Obviously the people who live there have great knowledge of magic and maybe in my setting the only people who have access to that kind of magic are high elves. So okay, that's good, high elves live there. Now if they have such a great city in such a harsh world, that means they must have some means to protect themselves, right? So maybe you decide they're so adept at magic that they have created constructs to patrol and guard this city. So now you're starting to build some flavor with these high elves who have these constructs and maybe there's some kind of caste system with another race of elves or other creatures who live there that rely on the high elves for maintaining the city so maybe they do all of the menial work in town. And this could make a lot of sense too regarding the constructs because they don't need to eat or sleep and that would preserve a lot of their precious resources in a desert-like environment. Once you start brainstorming about the place like this, just let yourself go on a tangent and write down everything you say or think of that you find interesting. Once you're done, you can go back over your notes and then really start to flesh things out and bring the area to life. Before you know it, you've got a new point of interest to put down in your desert. Keep in mind though, this method doesn't necessarily relate just to locations, I just happen to use a location in this example. It could be artwork of a really cool monster or some kind of military and you really like the way their armor looks. All we're really doing here is taking apart all the information we can gather from that photo and then just building on it for our game. 
Even when I'm not specifically looking for these kind of pictures, sometimes I just come across this stuff on the internet and I will save it and then later on, when I need that inspiration, I'll then look back and I'll see something I saved maybe months ago and go, oh, that would be kind of cool, and then kind of work that into however I'm building my game at the time. Now another useful tool that you're actually using right now is YouTube. There are a bunch of great YouTubers who inspire me almost every day. I mean, for starters, we've got Matthew Colville, who if you're on this channel, I'm almost positive you know of him. But if you don't, you should definitely consider checking him out. He's got a lot of great videos and his running the game series is excellent for new DMs and even not so new DMs, especially if you're looking for ways to kind of mix up your game. You've also got WebDM, I mean those guys are putting out content related to just about anything D&D like every week. And of course there's WASD20 who is really good at explaining things in a way that I can understand at least. Lately I've been watching a lot of his videos about painting miniatures because they're just super useful, especially for someone like me who's just starting to get into painting, it's really fantastic. I never really got super into painting miniatures because I always thought that I didn't have the time for it or it would be too difficult or I just wouldn't be able to do it, but he really breaks it down in a great way and now I kind of wish I had been doing this for years. I know there are a lot of others out there, even some that I watch that I just can't think of at the moment, but the point is there are tons of great resources here on YouTube for you to use, and hearing what other DMs have to say in their way of doing things can be a great way to kind of add that into your knowledge and then change your style up a little bit. Now doing these things can be really helpful, but there are always times where you just get really stuck and sometimes frustrated and you just need to take a step back for a minute. I find a great way to do this and also stumble upon some interesting ideas is simply to just read. Fantasy, historical fiction, certain comic books, and some sci-fi can be great sources of ideas for a D&D campaign. The more obscure, the better, and I only say that because if you find something in a book that you think is really awesome and you want to add that idea into your campaign, if it comes from a more obscure book, it's much less likely that your players will realize that you ripped it off from somewhere. If, say, you have the Black Gates of Mordor in your campaign setting, that's really awesome and it's a cool location for your players to go to, but if any of them ever had Tolkien or just know of the Lord of the Rings movies, they're gonna know that it's borrowed. That said though, just because something is prominent in pop culture doesn't mean you can't use it in your game, just consider changing some of the main details so it's not as obvious. Instead of the black gate, maybe there's this huge metal wall with a colossal gate that opens into the mountains called God's Pass or something like that. Maybe I just pulled that name from another fantasy novel, or maybe I didn't, it doesn't matter. The point is that maintaining that sense of originality really lends to the realness of your world and kind of that suspended disbelief that we're all sharing in, and I know that's really important to some DMs. Granted, there's absolutely nothing wrong with running a game where these iconic locations from Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones are present in your world. I know some DMs who actually enjoy leaving references to other content, which is kind of cool in some cases. Ultimately, that just comes down to your style, but the overall point here is that books and comic books are great resources of information that should be mined. And the same thing goes for movies. I find movies are great at getting me in a mindset for a certain location. For example, if I'm creating an honorable Goliath society who has created a vast mountain kingdom where they train as expert samurai, I'll take an afternoon and watch some samurai films. Maybe I'll pick up something here or there, like a bit of dialogue or an idea for a character, but the whole point here is just getting into the mindset of the environment that I'm trying to create. That's not just a random example either, by the way. In my setting, the Goliath kingdoms are basically modeled after the Japanese feudal states, but that's for another video. Moving on. Another great source of content is the massive library of adventures built for older versions of D&D. Go figure. It's true though, something I wish I had been doing right from the start of my DMing career is going back and reading all of these classic adventures just to see what kind of ideas the writers were coming up with back then. You can find a lot of really cool stuff and the best part of it is you don't even have to be in a specific setting for most of these adventures to work. Say there's a really interesting encounter in Dwellers of the Forbidden City. Giant frog thing? Sounds great. Stolen. Wanna kill all your PCs at the table? Let's get some traps from Tomb of Horrors. Stolen. Need some crazy dinosaurs or an island, I'm assuming? Isle of Dread seems to do the trick. Stolen. And who knows, you may come across an adventure you end up liking so much, you just decide to drop the entire thing right into your world. This can be done with pretty minimal tweaking. Even newer adventures, albeit a bit more pricey, have lots of stuff you can just pull directly out of them. Out of the Abyss, for example, has some really interesting mini dungeons that you could easily just use as a random encounter in the wilds while your players are traversing a forest or something like that. The main thing to keep in mind here is that all of these books, all the source material and monsters, just 
everything is ultimately more of a guideline for you to make awesome adventures. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. One last thing I'll present here, which to some is going to be really obvious, but I still think it's worth mentioning, is Reddit. Of course there's the D&D subreddit, which I'm sure any of you who use Reddit are probably subscribed to, and you can find some pretty neat stuff there. Usually there's some plot hooks or uh, ways to get your players involved with the game, that kind of thing. But there are other subreddits out there that you might not be aware of. One that I actually use a lot is called D&D Behind the Screen, which is a subreddit specifically for DMs, and it's catered to helping everyone come up with new and interesting content for their games. I know Matt Colville, who we mentioned earlier, has his own subreddit as well, and a lot of great questions actually get asked there. I know I've certainly picked up a few things by reading through the comments section on a lot of those posts. I also usually check out the subreddits for other cool tabletop games that I'm interested in as well, like Pathfinder or Call of Cthulhu. Even if I'm not currently running or playing one of those games, a lot of those ideas can cross over and they'll play with each other, so to speak. Sometimes chatting with DMs and the people who share this hobby is all it takes to bring out that one little idea that could change your campaign forever. Anyways, that is all for today, so hopefully you found this video interesting and helpful, and if you have any strategies you use for getting inspired that I didn't talk about today, please leave a comment and let's talk about them. If you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing, I have at least one new video every week, and I'd recommend checking out my Monster of the Week series if you're looking for more creepy crawlers to populate your worlds. I'm really hoping that I can start making more videos like this, I haven't actually done DM or player tips almost since I started the channel, I've just really been focusing on doing nothing but monster of the week which has been a lot of fun but i want to start doing some more things here what i'd really like is to make the dm and player tips section regular so that there's at least another one of those every week as well so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in or if you've got ideas for topics that you'd like to see covered as always thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it and i'll see you next time